We're in um, Gloucestershire, in the Cotswolds, in the uh, lovely stone barn. It's Steve Winwood's private facility, but we do take in commercial work as well. This facility it covers so many different aspects of music, really, from production to recording to touring. This facility is spread out over multiple buildings with multiple rooms. We have the, the control room. I have a, another sort of smaller office control room. We've got one stone room for recording. We have a Dutch barn, which is the large format recording room. And we also have a vocal booth attached here. So the ability to bring all of that together with just a Cat5 cable and networking and fiber was really appealing. The studio setup and was looking for something that globally brought everything together and was rock solid with a decent signal to noise ratio and something that was pleasing to the ear and great to mix on. And I had a Red 2 and I put it up against another converter which was my kind of main flagship converter, which I loved in the studio. And when I listened to AB between them, uh, I couldn't really notice the difference. That's when I was like, well, it's the way to go. Because then I can just create consistency across the studio and live world. of something which I know to my ear from the studio, I'm then taken to the live. And you know, that was really a kind of, you know, light bulb moment for me. From there, I moved on to buying some of the D16s. I've got a Red 3. And then I was out on tour and some of the mic pre started failing that I had, which weren't focus right. You know, I'd lost the vocal at one point for like eight seconds in Vegas on um, Steve singing Higher Love. Looking back through the Dante logs, I could see that they're stuck on the network fine and it was the pre's failing. I made a phone call back to someone at Focusrite and basically they organised to send out the MP8Rs. Plugged one of those in. Absolutely rock solid. You've got two power supplies, you've got the primary and secondary. You know, it's got fans which aren't noisy in the units and they just became, for the rest of the tour, the kind of rock solid pre I had. So I think I got back off tour and I ordered another five straight away. So then that became the kind of backbone of my new live system. And that's pretty much been it for the past three years now, I'd say. The band which we take out on tour, we have drums, percussion, guitar, Steve who plays organ, and we also have a sax flute player. But yeah, that's been, you know, pretty kind of stable. And um, because of that, I've been able to kind of build the red net around that performance. I have two stage boxes and they're loaded with um, three MP8Rs and then one of the other racks has got a red 8 Pre which is connected to the wireless in ears. And that's the kind of backbone of what goes on stage. Um, at front of house, I have um, a Digico S21 with a Dante card fitted, but I also have a Mac Mini in a Sonnet chassis running the Focusrite PCIe card with the primary and secondary connectors for running plugins, audio. And then the other things that we have on stage are the X2Ps and the AM2s for running headphones, talkback systems between crew, some percussion instruments, clip track. The system is focus right based. But it's all kind of designed for like festivals so that these two stage boxes literally drop on the back of the risers of the drums and percussion. And then that just gives it the ability to throw a Cat5 and a power at it. It comes live on the network and we're off. And because of the precision of the pre's and everything else within the RedNet control system, it really just gives us the ability to walk onto a festival stage and Steve be comfortable and confident of what he's gonna get in his ears straight away.